I don't know how to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I need to be very, very good, but just bear with me. Um, <coughs> you guys are international. Uh, uh, have you been to Africa before? How many people have been to Africa before? In the room? So you are international. Well, great, great. Um, I think I'm just going to try to to just sum up with what my friends are just talking about. You know, I'm, I'm nearly 40 years old next year, and uh, so happy birthday. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, I've, I've been growing up t into many, many countries. Um, I've been lucky to, to go to many, many countries. And um, so I was born in Senegal. So when I go back home sometime, I ask myself, what's happened to us? What happened to us Africans? And I talked to my mom. So I said to my mom, you felt your generation have felt Africa. And then she doesn't like me saying that. And then I give her an explanation why. And I see myself now as a 40, nearly 40 years old woman who lives in, in the West, uh, been to, lived in 30 countries, uh, almost been to many, many countries. And um, I come back, I say, what can we do to change our continent? What can, how can we do to work with, how can we create a solidarity between uh, us, people in the diaspora and people in the West? And I struggle, I struggle very, very well. And um, I, I go and look into the educational system in Africa. We are still using the same curriculum uh, post-election, post-colonialism. Uh, and, and things are not getting better. So I can call myself probably an international today, but I don't think I'm the new internationalist. And, and because I, I don't think that at all. Um, because we are still struggling. We are still struggling big time uh, into the, things, the way we do things, the way we talk about things, the way we tackle things, the way we care about things, uh, from the climate change issues to the education of people. I was, I was watching EDL, the, the gentleman from the EDL uh, yesterday, and I, I just said to myself, I, I looked at him, I was born Muslim, but I'm a, I'm a moderate Muslim, so I, I don't uh, pray all the time and I drink wine. <laughs> so don't tell my mom. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so, you know, and, and but the, what, what struck me about the, the conversation, uh, what I was listening, is the guy's not educated. He, he's, he's, you know, he's, there, is a current, it, there, there are the issues, there are proper issues we need to deal with here in the United Kingdom. But he, he's not educated. He doesn't understand what's happening. And only if he was educated, he will understand more about Islam and he will understand more about the Muslim people. So... We have those sort of people in our in our in our world today, creating massive massive issues for the, for our for our world, and 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 one of the my biggest fight for the last couple of years was is the NGOs the NGOs that are going to Africa, and and for the last how many decades before I was even born, they they've been into that continent. What have they done for to to Africa? You we, you know Bill Gates will say to me, well we. You know, we have done the malaria, we've, we eradicated polio. Yes, that's fine. But there are so many struggles, so many things in my village in Senegal when I go there. For me, nothing has been done. And I've, I've been growing up as a woman listening to these sort of narratives about Africa. Africa has got diseases, Africa is poor, Africa's, you know, Africa has got tribes. Yes, I'm, I'm not saying Africa doesn't have problems. <laughs> you know, I'm not saying we don't have problems in Africa. I, I don't, I'm not saying that. But I think we need to, we need to, let's say if we eliminate Bono from this. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's let's, the first thing we all looked at. <laughs> let's say we just erase Bono from the, the, the map, what will happen, you know, and, and so many things will happen here. But I think the other things, what I'm trying to say here is that the education, the fact that the fear hasn't changed for the last 40 years about, about not just Africa, but about the Middle East, about Asia, places where I go, there's still this fear, this unknown, this lack of knowledge, this, the things people don't know yet. We still have this struggle. So for me to, to claim that I'm, I'm a new internationalists, I will probably start talking about, uh, I'm trying to get the note next, I'm trying, I'm gonna, this is, this is the Africa, this is my Africa, this is the Africa I go to, this is Africa I travel, I'm privileged to travel twice a month to Africa, I see people in the continent, let's say in the next 40 years, let's say we celebrate 80 years of the new internationalists, what we're gonna see, this map will change, 
it will completely change to something different. I see, when I go to the continent, I see investment, I see trade, I see people who are 40 years old at my age. Some of them are living in the West, some of them are living in, in, in the continent. Some of them, they don't know where to go. Some of them, they've been living here for quite a long time now, for 20 years probably. They've been here at their teenage, teenage age. What have they done for the continent? I said to myself, we have become elites. We become complacent to stay in this, con in this, in, in Europe, not doing something for our continent. What can we do? What can we? Are we afraid? Are we scared? Are we scared that our systems are not working? Home? Are we scared to go back to build our continent? I don't know. So we need to answer that. So this is the the the. the the, 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 the map I, w I want to show you, but I'll go back, I'll go through again. For what I'm saying right now is, let's see what we can do for the continent and keep calm and invest in Africa. <laughs> <laughs>